To eat. Let's eat. Can we eat here? No, I don't want. The table is disgusting. I'm Kiri, I'm 16 years old. I suffer from tetechiolophobia, fear of stickers, three years. And tripophobia, fear of holes, five years. Eat for fun. For most people, coming to the market is normal. But for me, I can't sit here because of the stickers on the table. The stickers make me feel disgusted. I only take away the food from here. I haven't been able to sit here for like two to three years. I can't remember the last time we sat down at a coffee shop or a restaurant together without her walking away or avoiding the tables. Kiwi has had phobias. Triggers will be everywhere for her. The first sticker that I was triggered by was on a pen. The stickers made me feel like, get out of the place. Fruit stores are usually the places that I avoid the most. Mostly apples. Whenever there's a sticker on an apple, and if I touch it, I will like, I want to sanitize my hand or like scrub it off. Whenever I want to eat fruits, I usually ask my mom to peel it for me. When I'm washing my hands, my eyes like look straight or look up to avoid seeing the drainage holes. I don't even know how long it's been since I could look at my hand while washing them. When I'm in the bathroom, I always turn off the lights to avoid seeing anything like can be triggering. I haven't seen the drainage holes at my house for years. I can't face it. Having my phobias, it came to a point where I was so tired of living, of waking up every day, having to face it. For a long time, I kept it a secret from my family because I was also afraid of what they would think like I'm a failure or a mistake. Because of my phobia, I left a mess at the toilet. My sister got really angry at me. I decided to tell her. I may have started Kiwi's phobias. I am not entirely sure, but when it first started out, she was consuming a lot of internet content from PewDiePie about triple phobias. After she watched these videos, she brought it up to my mum. She thinks that she has this particular phobia, which uh, was something like a self-diagnosis kind of kind of thing at that point of time. I think my mum and I were quite convinced that uh, these videos were probably the reason uh, why she was telling us that oh, she struggles with um, trypophobia. I think my parents were just thinking that, you know, it was something that she would outgrow. Kiri's phobias have definitely put a strain on the relationships in the family. So we got into a lot of arguments. There was this particular incident I recall where I brought back food for her and she was not able to throw that pack of food away properly. Because there was probably a sticker on the dustbin. And so much so that, like, we're just like, like, why? Like, a fire o is capable of 
doing this. Where are we going today? Shooting buses and having fun. I enjoy taking photos. And since it's Sunday and I don't have anything to do, you know, decided that it would be a fun thing to experience uh, and join. Mm. Normally, I tell my parents on the day itself that I'm going out. And yeah, they know that I can take care of myself outside. Uh. Hi, I'm Teddy. I'm father of Benedict. Let me start maybe sharing with you how he was as a child. He was happy, he was bubbly, you know, uh, he was playful. Uh, same like any other kids, I guess. But we found out one thing about him. Since he was in kindergarten, he couldn't share his feelings. Maybe because he was late in his speech as well. Actually, until now, he wouldn't share his sadness, happiness, or stress. When that emotion is being asked, and then that's when he just shut down, I guess. He just kept it to himself. So when he was frustrated or sad, you know, he would actually just broke down. Ah, oh, first time seeing in BC seats, yeah? Those who know me well, I can get quite hot-tempered. Some episodes are only known by my closer friends. Uh, and, you know, I try not to say so much about it because it really can affect my day. Because uh, it, you know, relapses in my head. They only happen once every six months. When I get angry, I normally just try to keep it to myself. Primary six uh, onwards, yes, that was a start. He will be easily agitated. All the students were gathered in the hall that day to listen to a briefing that one of the teachers had come up with and to take note of some extra school rules. Lah. So that day, there was another student. He was sitting behind me and, you know, disturbing me, like, casually just punching my back, then uh, making me annoyed of him. So in return, I punched him in the stomach. That's when the fight kept on going and my form teacher saw what was going on. The form teacher only dragged me out of the hall uh, at that time. I remember her exact words. Uh. She started shaming me at the side, uh, saying that, oh, you know, I I won't have a bright future, you know, I won't have any friends or good company in the future. Then I got caught hit and then at and then I punched her in the face. Uh. She fell to the ground. And then I pushed her against the door. And then she fell again. Uh. After that, I got suspended for a week. Then later on, got caning for a two strokes of the cane uh, in school, uh, privately. Yeah, that was that was the first incident. That was the first incident, yeah. Secondary one, there was an incident with me at home. That night, it was close to midnight when he wanted to go out for photography. And I wouldn't let him. He got angry. He asked me many, many times. And I refused on refusing him. I think he couldn't accept the rejection, I would say. He didn't know how to handle it, how to calm down. He wasn't happy, and then he took a knife into his room. 
I didn't uh, immediately try to go inside his room because I want him to calm down first. He was behind the door. I had to push through. He was already crying. And when I managed to push through, he pointed the knife at me. My wife managed to get inside his room. I guess he calmed down when his mom was inside the room. He threw away the knife. I didn't talk to him for three days. Because uh, emotionally, I was shocked that he would go to this, this extent, you know. I want to give him some space as well for him to calm down and also for me to calm down. I think after three days, I went to his room. He gave me a hug, said sorry. Sorry, Papa. That was... Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm glad he realized, you know. But at the same time, I was also worried because his emotion, emotional health. When Kira was younger, she was pretty goal-driven. She was very outgoing, bubbly. And after her phobia set in, she became a bit more withdrawn. She struggles with fear of stickers and fear of drainage holes. When she first brought it up to us, it was difficult for us to um, understand what was actually transpiring. We tried to bring her to the National University Hospital. I think she saw a psychologist there. But I think after the first visit with the psychologist, she gave up. I was only 13 or 14. I have troubles opening up to anybody, friends, let alone a therapist. And it wasn't working for me. So Dr. Matthew is a pastor in my church. I met him and he was sharing about how EMDR was. Uh, really helpful for a variety of different psychological conditions. After hearing about Dr. Matthew's um, EMDR therapy, I brought it up to her. I'm going to pay for this therapy. For one session, you go and give it a try and we'll see how things work out. A few years later, when I was in SEC 2, mid-year, around August, I had the thought that ever since a year ago, this teacher hasn't been treating us well, hasn't been fair to us, hasn't been good to us in any way. So it was a build-up of emotions. She gave us this attitude that none of us liked, none of us agreed with. Every time we don't complete an assignment that she gives out, she asks us to stand and then she scolds the whole class up to maybe 10, 15 or 20 minutes a day. Not handing in assignments and homework to teachers now is a sign of saying, oh, this student doesn't want to succeed. They don't want to put any effort in. That is one of the reasons why I feel it's hard to go to school. Because I'm scared of the judgments. Every time I don't complete something that has to meet a deadline, I hear the word failure, I hear the word useless. And that is the two most, two most hurt words I hear in my head. So that day, the moment she stepped into the class, I took a table and after that I threw it at her when she was standing at the door and it hit her face. So I went up to her and I punched her in the face and shoved her to the floor. After that, I kicked her once. Uh. Then 
everything went blur. After I reached the school, I was in talk with the principal and a few other teachers and stuff. They told me the consequences that he may face, which might be unexpected from school. The teacher actually made the police report. We were called to the police station to make a statement. The school asked me to take him to IMH for mental check. He stayed for two nights. They didn't find any mental issues. They only said that it was an anger management issue. We know it from the school that he told his school counselor that he has been hearing voices. Voices that told him to hurt uh, other people. We didn't know. He, he, he never told us. He shared it with the school counselor. That was a few months before the incident. That's why I wanted to to get some more help from outside. I actually looked for independent counselor. I found him online, Mr. Chua. He's MOE certified. He was stated that he was dealing with children. So I guess he is more focused in, you know, that age group. Mental health is something very difficult to pick up, number one. It can be vague at times. Uh, there are not a lot of clear signs of what mental health is. At times you can see, at times you don't. Hello. Have a seat, please come. Thank you, thank you. How are you? Benedict uh, is a child growing up, puberty and everything. He wasn't really sure what's going on with himself as well. He knows that he, he has some difficulty managing his emotions and he gets angry and he, he tend to get physical. But he, he's also at, at loss. When you counsel a child, you look beyond the child. So you look at issues that the child is facing, where the child might have learning difficulty, whereby the child might struggle with emotional needs. Can you tell me a bit more about this trust? What is trust to you, well, between you and the teachers? Mm, being able to converse and talk to them with okay. confidence okay. that they won't share it to other students or colleagues. Thank you, Benedict. So basically, you, you felt that they must be able to keep secrets and when the teachers respect privacy and keep whatever you share with them to themselves, mm. it builds the trust. It goes up. Is there anything else that the teachers can do to help you trust them more? This is important because I think we will want to equip the teacher the skill mm. to build the trust with you. Bonding with the students. Wonderful, bonding. So can you describe a bit to Uncle Chua what is bonding to you? Mm, you know, conversing to the students on a friend-friend uh. level. What was consistent was when they actually shared the primary school incident is very similar to the secondary school incident whereby he felt that the teacher was unfair. The teacher wasn't caring enough. So there's a lot of self-centeredness here, lah, which is very common when we are going through puberty. So Benedict, like let's say your privacy would be violated or let's say they don't spend enough time with you or they do not bond with you as a peer level, the trust will be broken mm, almost yeah. immediately in a sense. Yeah. How will you feel? I feel pretty upset with the person. Uh. Okay, then how do we bring down the emotion, bring it back down? Cooling down by doing something I like, talking, right. talking in out with them uh, is to find out like why. Thank you, Benedict. Benedict, I share with us. Uncle Chua, um, if given me a chance, I will give me a second chance. I will grab it. I will do my very best. A new school is just so much more challenges compared if he's given a chance to stay in the old school, whereby they can straight away work on the issues to him. So we actually did email the school together, the father and mother saying that he will want a chance to be in the same school. He wants to get up where he fall.
after this, my third session, I'm more open to EMDR therapy because Dr. Matt doesn't really ask too much questions. He just asks, what's been triggering me lately? Can I eat the food because of sticker on it? Bring up a picture of that. Those negative words, I'm not in control. On a scale of 0 to 10, how disturbing does it feel to you now? 4. He doesn't dig that deep into things I feel like I don't want to share. He just asks me things that I'm comfortable with. You are still avoiding seeing the stickers and the holes. Is, is that correct? Okay, you cannot eat a fruit because of sticker on it. It happened yesterday. What is your fear and disgust level like, like right now? Four. Four, okay. These phobias can be very, very intense. And for her, when she first started EMDR, it was 10 out of 10. And it obviously has a very big impact on her. her agony and her anguish and all the negative emotions of shame that was coming up. So she was obviously very shameful about her fears. We'll continue the desensitizing. You just continue to hold this. I'm treating Kiri with EMDR, eye movement desensitizing, reprocessing. So the right brain contains memories of emotions. The left brain contains memories that are factual. So I'm basically transferring the memories from the emotional part of the brain to the factual part of the brain. It reduces the intensity of the negative emotions. Okay, bring up the fear of sticker. When you go to the kitchen, when watching TV, the skin tearing. Yeah, bring up the picture. I ask her these questions to build up a memory of an emotional trigger that brings on all these feelings of fear and all these feelings of disgust. I use a tarot tapper where there's a buzz on each of the hands. So under conditions of memory being developed, I'm facilitating the transfer of memory from the right to the left. Bring up the picture again. Let your fear come up. Let your disgust feelings, let your negative emotions, let it come up. I don't feel it. You don't feel it? Today is my third session and I feel skeptical about it because... Hmm, I don't think it's that simple like just hold things and buzzes left and right and just imagining my phobias that it'll be gone. So I'm really skeptical. I'm very tired. <laughs> okay, you're very tired, huh? You want to read the picture again? I don't know, I can't imagine it. You can't imagine? I wonder whether it'll ever work. So like, why waste my time? Well, I noticed that she is getting a little bit more agitated. She is uh, feeling a little bit discouraged. Do you have any comments you want to make, any questions you want to ask? EMDR will still work whether or not you are sceptical. You just have to be open enough to try it. I hope that she really doesn't give up. So Mr. Chua felt that Benedict was very remorseful, so he emailed a school counsellor. The child is willing to work with us to learn coping skills to better manage his anger. I really hope we can work together and support him. As of now, to change to a new school is a big adjustment for him. It may not necessarily be the best thing for him now. But by then, the decision by the school already made. Actually, the school have uh, told me and my wife that uh, we have to find new school because uh, they're not able to work with Benedict anymore. So, in other words, we, yeah, he is being expelled and find a new school. Yeah. I felt a bit upset, lah. I mean, um, what's it? It's a bit hard for me because I actually treasured uh, my my relationship with other teachers and friends uh, over the course of about two years. Who was kind enough to let him have his final exam in condition that he just did the test in the office. He wasn't allowed to roam around the school. I did approach two schools nearby for a place for him, but um, but 
Oh, we were told we will be in the waiting list. I'm cancelling my appointment with Dr. Matt. And I just don't believe in it anymore. I think my sister only sends me to therapy because it inconveniences her. Like, not because she cares about me. I only share my phobias with my sister. I think she uses the therapy to make up for her not being around. Rather than therapy, sometimes I just need to talk to her. I really miss that with her. Dr. Matthew replied, this is what he said. You might not think it's working, but you have to keep up with therapy in order for this to work. I hope you'll show up this week. I don't feel like going. I don't have the motivation to go. Currently going to Hot Park for the photography course. It's organized by NEA. You know, the school invited me to take part in it as well. Yeah, it's my new school. When we have the second meeting with the school principal at that time, they managed to find a, a new school. It was kind of them to help us. The first meeting with the new school principal, he asked us what was his uh, interest, his hobby. They were kind enough to actually invite Ben to join photography outing even though he was not actually a student yet. At first, I was a bit reluctant, but yeah, I would say it's important. At least my transition into the school won't be so hard, you know. So when I enter, at least I know a few people. How does this relate to city nature? In the background, there's like all the buildings and amount of trees as well. And the helicopter gives like the protecting vibe, you know. Okay, I understand. You have others? Others. Because I'm also quite curious why you select one. But you have so many in your phone. Wow. <laughs> I'm not sure which one to choose. Uh, Maybe this one. Okay, actually to be honest, I like the first one that you showed me. Yeah. Uh, I think it's good. Okay. 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 The favorite part of today will be bonding with the other students uh, from Pingy. And talking to a teacher about photography as well. Okay. <laughs> How fast is your shutter speed? One to one thousand F eleven. Of course, I'm using an eight hundred prime. <laughs> an eight hundred prime. After talking to the other students, they seem like nice people. Even though some of them are slightly quiet, don't really have to talk a lot. I normally have the urge to help out and protect the quieter students in classes. And when I noticed the teacher was doing the same as what I have the urge to do, it makes me trust the teacher more. Okay. Kiwi doesn't feel that EMDR therapy is working for her. So I'm going to meet Dr. Matthew to get a better understanding about how these treatments will really help her. Hi, Dr. Hi, Matt. Yuki. Yes. When I was going through her case, I was... Actually, I felt quite sorry for her, you know, because I can imagine that this is a rare condition. Right. And there are not many mental health professionals who will understand specific phobias like the way EMDR pro professionals would, you know. Right. Because uh, EMDR is a, is a processing-based therapy. Mm. You don't have to understand the specifics. Mm. You just have to go for the triggers. Understand. She told me that she don't want to continue anymore because, in her words, she, she tells me she doesn't feel it. Mm. But at the same time, I mean, of course, I, I'm sure she doesn't know what is happening to her. Initially, when I started with her, the memory of the negative emotions, it was like 8 or 9 out of 10. Yes. So she feels the fear in the beginning. Right. But through the process of bilateral stimulation, her fear has been decreased. 
I think it's important to allow her to talk about the situation with you to help her get her perspective correct and to help her to see the improvements that she has been making. It's true, it's true. Yeah, yeah? She did make improvements, she did make progress. So you did notice the progress? Huh? Uh, from what she said, yes. <laughs> Okay, so I think that that will be it, I, and I'm, I'm I'm going to continue to see her. That's good. Yeah. Right. Thank All you. Right. Thank yes. you, doctor. After talking to Doctor Wu, I decided to have a heart-to-heart -heart talk with Kiri to understand what's happening, um, because she's not keen on continuing with therapy anymore. Are you doing this out of concern or convenience? Talking to Dr. Wu, I decided to have a heart-to-heart -heart talk with Kiwi to understand what's happening. Um, so, I heard you want to continue therapy. And you want to tell me why? It's, it's just very repetitive. So it's the same thing, just holding the device and buzzing here and there. And are you doing this out of concern or convenience? You think I'm doing this out of convenience? Ah? You think that... Like, like, you think I make a mess everywhere I go and you want to solve the issue, right? It's actually quite true. It is inconvenience. A year ago, she moved out of our room because I have had um, stickers pasted on parts of our room and it has never affected her growing up. But because of her condition, suddenly uh, these things made her feel unsafe in her own room. She prefers to sleep in the living room, which is a shared space. Yeah, and I cannot access that. Yeah, it made me feel annoyed. I thought, you know, this, this can't go on. Yeah, it's not a sustainable way for her to live. She can have a much better quality of life. I mean, okay, the mess is one thing la, but then really, like if you think about it, five, ten years down the road, you want to continue living like this? Well, you'd be surprised how well people can adapt. No, it's not about adapting, it's about you getting better because I don't just want you to adapt and, and live a life that is like semi-compromised. I mean, there's so much more for you to like experience. Okay, yeah, I get it that you think that you don't need a therapist, but it's been so many years. Maybe I don't need a therapist. I just need to have a talk with you like every night, like we used to. Okay, look, you know that I started a new job. I'm not as free as I was before. And you and work six, then you can just come home. Yeah, you but go out with I your am, friends every day. But I'm tired. Look, so I, am I. I work too. Okay, yeah, but this is a season in my life where like I'm a bit more occupied, and I'm trying my best already. How are you trying your best? Sometimes I feel that she doesn't appreciate what I do for her, but that's okay. Yeah, I mean, I always know that when I was a kid, I also don't appreciate all that my parents have done for me either. Okay, I mean... I, 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 try and, I try and spend time with you as much as I can, right? Do you? Okay, look, uh, I'm not perfect, nobody is. But at the end of the day, I'm not a professional. I can hear you out as much as you want, but you need somebody who's a professional to be able to journey with you and address the root issues that cause all the phobias that you are struggling with right now. Yeah. Seeing a therapist as in like, I hope that these things will be resolved because, you know, one day I really hope that you'll be able to take a shower with the lights on and not be afraid of like these things that disgust you. Is that okay for you? Okay. I think you just need to be a little bit more patient with yourself and People go through years of therapy. There's no quick fix to, you know, what you are going through right now that 
has been going on for like four years. What do you have to lose right now by continuing with the treatment? I mean, you remember you told me after the first session you felt like, well, you can sleep and all that. So will you continue? Yes, I will. Being able to talk to my sister today, I just feel this release, this weight off my chest. I feel like I can continue therapy without feeling too skeptical about it. And I mean, last but not least, I want you to know that I really, really care a lot for you. It's not that I am putting you on the program just because I am very inconvenienced by what you're going through. Okay? Thank you. Okay? Yes. Okay? Yes. Okay. Okay, so Mr. Teddy, so Benedict shared about how he felt that certain things that previously when he see in the classroom, uh, he felt very strongly about it. But right now, he's able to let it go. He just share with Benedict and me, like, uh, school is going to reopen. What are some concerns that, that you might have or questions? As of now, there's no pressure. It's okay. But later on, when there's new environment, homework, uh, new teachers, that's the worry where he's able to cope or not. Right, right. When he doesn't, how would he react? When we take away school, the homework, the timeline, and the interaction with the teachers, he's actually quite a calm boy. Because we, we technically you remove the triggers. So the thing about anger is this, it's difficult when the triggers start coming. So Benedict's coping is whereby you go and take photo, but you must remember, so when school starts, we know he will run into some difficulty. That's why we, we go back to the point that we need to transit him nicely. Uh, time management and managing homework. Sometimes everything just bundles up. Yeah. Your parents can step in or you don't want them to step in? Mm, don't want them to step in. Uh. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you want them to trust you? Yeah. Uncle Chua had a conversation with your father earlier on, saying that if you don't do your homework, let's say you have hard time trying to submit your homework, they will always call him. So how do you think we can solve this situation? Normally, it's just me you know, being tired for the day la, or being a bit lazy. And so this is something you can do as homework. La. Once your motivation drops, then when does your dad come in? I think he wants to know that. Because once he knows that, then he knows when to step in. La. And I think you, you appreciate your dad being there. La. He is like any other secondary school kid who feel, feels the stress from deadlines. But for Benedict, the biggest thing about him is this. He tends to form certain impression or perception about particular teachers. And it's always based on the teacher's behaviour or how the teacher interacts with other students or his friends. So these are certain things that he keeps where he doesn't process it. So normally when we handle cases like this, like Benedict who has anger management issue, especially at teachers in the school, it's very important for us uh, as, as a counselling centre to actually hand over to how can the school better manage him. So when you go to school, this is going to be a trigger. So how, or do you want the teachers to step in to do this? Because it's very interesting, they will keep calling him and then he will keep pestering you. Do you want him to just step up totally? Then you manage the teachers? Ah? Yeah, I think managing directly with the teachers will be easier. So Teddy, let him try. Yeah, I have faith. Uh, I'm willing to try, no problem. Let's do that. Hey, thank you, Mr. Teddy, for that. I, actually, I was about to close the session with that. Mandy, do you realise that I did not intentionally talk about the incident? All of us have faith that it will not happen. But again, if it happened this time, it's different. We are all behind you. This is Team Benedict. You're not alone anymore. Today is my last session with Dr. Matt. Hello, Kiri. Hello, Dr. How are Matt. You? I'm good. Okay. Um, this will be our final session, our eighth session. Uh. I think you've made lots and lots of progress. You notice the stickers on the floor on the way here? Uh, yeah. Okay. How is your level of disgust? Like, maybe one. Oh, one? one. Zero point five. That's very, very good. Reduction in the level of disgust. Last week was two out of ten. This week is zero point five. Uh. 
It's improved for me in ways that like, I face a lot of my phobias at work. Like we have to put due dates. And recently, I had to cut some fruits and they had some stick on it. But I didn't feel as disgusted as I thought I would, like seeing the stickers on the fruits. I think you've made a lot of progress, okay? The fear of holes and the fear of stickers, especially the fear of stickers, have gone down substantially and you notice it behaviorally as well. Yeah. You're able to eat the fruit with the sticker on it. I think that has never happened to you before, right? Yeah. That was amazing. So behaviorally, you have shown progress that is consistent with the progress in the clinic session. Even though she has not entirely gotten rid of that fear of holes, but the sense of overwhelming, she's able to overcome it. Thank you for helping me clear oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Sure, sure, sure. the sessions. I've been feeling very hopeful and um, better. No, I used to be very clouded by because of my phobias. Oh, because everywhere you see stickers and everywhere you see holes, right? Yeah, and that makes me very like depressed and angry. All the negative feelings up. I would say for her, for Kiri, that she can fully recover because she's close to the end of the channel and the progress is sustainable. So it has been like a few weeks since we last monitored her progress and then I find that her, her fears and anxieties have gone down considerably and has stayed down. So congratulations, you've done very well. Thank you. Yeah? The first few days of school was tough, you know. I didn't know anyone. I didn't really talk much to anyone. And one week later, you know, I knew quite a bit of people after some changes in class, like, like moving of seats, you know, I get to know more people who are more open, more social. At the end of two weeks, I felt more relaxed to talk to some of the other classmates that I have. Uh, I felt more open, uh, especially, you know, to share interests, share about our hobbies and stuff. Every weekend or so, I would just come out, you know, to here or maybe elsewhere to, you know, chill and hang out with friends. Uh. Can you chill? Yeah. Then we wait for the 3D. I think maybe we go further that side. Uh. If I have to compare previous school last year and new school this year, last year was really a turbulence, you know? Um, more, he was more tense, he was more easily agitated. Uh, but now, much more relaxed. Right. Yeah, not easily agitated now. More laughter, more sharing. Yes. So, even though it's small, but I see that as a very, very huge improvement. Mm, yeah, I look forward to going to school quite a bit, and it was mainly because you know, the teachers are encouraging me, you know, that I can be open to explore and see what we love to do inside the school. It's happiness, I guess. A very huge step for him, you know, to, to open up like this. Hopefully, if there's any issue next time, he will he will he's willing to open up and let us help him. Uh, yeah. We want to take this opportunity to say anything to Benedict. What's up, all? I love you. And I'll be there for you. What if we through? That is all I can, can assure you. And I hope uh, uh, I hope you'll be better.
Chocolate protein shake with banana. Okay, anything else? No. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Does it feel different being back here? Last time, these QR codes used to overwhelm me. Now I'm fine already. I don't feel so affected by it anymore. Mm. And I feel glad that I can be here. Every time you wanted this, I to tap out for you. Remember or not? Mm -hmm. And now you can come here and drink it yourself. Isn't that great? That is great. <laughs> <gasps> what makes it different about this time around where you can enjoy this fresh? I get to savour the moment. Actually, I'm quite proud of her progress because, like, um, finally there's a very tangible um, change and there's a tangible um, improvement from uh, what was before. Over the years, there has been many misunderstandings and we were always at a loss as to how to help her. But I feel that finally there was concrete steps that she now can take towards a recovery. However long her journey will take, I'm very sure that, um, uh, that she will be able to continue on this journey. Uh, I never thought it would be possible to like dine in anywhere again. What do you hope to work on next? Uh, my mental health. <laughs> It's not funny. It is serious business. Mental health. Hey, I know. I know. I'm very happy and satisfied with my progress because I can finally sit down somewhere without being overwhelmed by something as small as a sticker. Having my sister be there for me really gave me the willpower to keep going to therapy. I hope that one day I can fully recover from my phobias. 